What's up, Banana Froth? We got some really good news in the disc golf world. Wait a second. Shades Anthony's back, baby. The dude did respond on Facebook. Dang it. So now I don't get to keep these. I'm going to give them back to him like today or tomorrow or something. But Shades Anthony will live on for one more video, even if it's going to be on the froth. Today we're going to be taking a look at what the DGN has just recently announced. And then I'll also show you some packages and some stuff that's going on today. But DGN recently announced that uh, we're going to start over on their Instagram because that's what makes the most sense. But they have a major update to the Disc Golf Network, which is kind of the official media of the Disc Golf Pro Tour. And honestly, the Disc Golf Network did a relatively good job at like producing enough content. But last year, like you guys heard, if you were on my channel for a decent bit, I complained a decent bit about the DGN and was hoping for a lot of these changes to happen. So this is really good news for Disc Golf, I think, because it'll make... The DGN, which is like the main product that seems to be funding the Disc Golf Pro Tour, which if the Disc Golf Pro Tour stops, like we're going to need to find a new tour. Everything's going to have to scramble and like it's going to cause a lot of problems in Disc Golf because they're a really, really powerful organization. But it's the main funder of the Disc Golf Pro Tour. And obviously, I think Jeff Spring, who runs these things, he like w is always trying to make things better. But when you're kind of stuck with Vimeo OTT and you can't even rewind in real time, you get everybody going to YouTube whenever they can to watch all of your content. And people don't want to subscribe because people like paying money for stuff that they actually enjoy. And so if you're having like a bad experience and the UI is kind of trash and you have to wait until two or three hours for the videos to process after the live stream so you can go and watch it back if you want to look at anything that happened or maybe I was out playing because it was a Saturday that was really nice. I want to come home, watch the DGN. I'm not able to do that in real time right after it finishes. And so now a lot of those issues are going to be fixed. So you have the Disc Golf Network 2.0, which is in Amazon Web Services. Uh, I guess Insys Video Technologies is apparently a newish company. We'll learn a little about that, which is powered by AWS, which is like the biggest web service provider. I think they provide web service for like Facebook, X, other people like that. There's a new user interface with a fresh look, which we could actually take a quick look at right here. I don't, I didn't actually think I was still subscribed to the DGN. Oh, I'm not good. I'm not logged in, but you can already see if you looked at the DGN before versus now, it does look significantly better. Like even just these little hover icons and you get just the title over it. That is really nice. Shop now, you can go to the Jomas Pro Shop, but all of this I'm, I'm going to see if my login still works. I think I canceled it for wrong login or password. Try again. Okay, so I don't actually have a login anymore. Wait, I should. What the heck? I should at least have a login. Why does it not want me to pay it more money? I'm so confused. Okay, maybe I'm going to have to make a new one next year. Okay, who knows? Well, I don't have a login apparently because um, I canceled it because I didn't I didn't care too much about all the off-season content. I was too worried about making all my own off-season content. But already just looking at this, it looks significantly cleaner. Wow, like I, I'm i very impressed with just how that looks already because that's, that's already launched. And you have uh, live DVR, which is massive. You can pause and rewind the live broadcast in real time. This is the main reason that I was on YouTube so much watching disc golf and why like every time that it was on YouTube, I would watch it on YouTube without fail. First off, user experience is phenomenal. I'm a YouTube native person. But second, the pause and rewind is so good because in real time, if I want to go and see a shot or I'm like listening in my headphones, because a lot of times there's a lot of long pauses in DGN, like this isn't going to fix all of DGN's problems, obviously. Hopefully they're going to continue listening to the people, maybe getting some better commentators, maybe firing some commentators. I'm not going to spe speculate and talk about that. Maybe hiring some new ones, maybe just getting different mixes of commentators, editing out some long pauses, having better like rewind packages. But if I hear something in real time, that like happens and I'm like unloading my dishwasher because that's something that happened that I remember happening. And I was like, what the heck? Someone just aced and I couldn't go back and rewind it. And it's like, well, now do I have to go to the Facebook or the Instagram of DGN and wait 20 minutes for the social media person to put this up there? And I can't like just go and rewind and go back to 15 seconds or like I can't pause if there's a big moment and like I gotta go take a piss. Like I wish that I could just do those things. And so when it was on YouTube, it was great because I could pause. We could rewind. I could like play fun games with my wife where I'd pause it and be like make or miss. And like it would make watching disc golf fun together for both of us, even though she doesn't care about disc golf. And then you have instant transcoding as well, which is exactly what I was talking about when you're out playing and you come home and you're like, oh, this just wrapped up. Maybe I can go and watch the rewind because I prefer watching the live because when it did get to the live transcoded portion of it after it was already live and it was like saved as a VOD or video on demand, 
you were able to skip through and go through and skip all the boring parts and get to all the shots that you found interesting. And that's how I'd prefer to watch it instead of Jomez, especially if it was day of. But you would have to wait two to three hours for the video to process, just like a live video over on YouTube. And so now, because they have that live DVR, it's gonna have actual instant transcoding. So you don't have to wait. It'll immediately be available to watch. And this is kind of big as well. I'm interested, there's gonna be an article that we look at that will give us a little more information. But it says that it's easier for PDGA members because you can simply pair your PDGA member account for an automatic discount. So I don't know how to do that because I'm not gonna pay for DGN right now. I'm gonna wait until February for everything to kind of come back on. But Apparently, you can just put in like your PDGA account and then you get your automatic 50% off or whatever. Also coming soon, I don't know when this is going to be happening. Obviously, they said launch date TBA to be announced. TBD, TBA, which one do you use? I always use TBD. It just sounds, it rolls off the tongue better. TBD. TBA, TBD. TBD for the win. 60 FPS live streaming, upgrading from 30 FPS, so silky smooth. I, that will look so beautiful. I'm just worried that that's gonna cause some serious latency issues because that's gonna depend so much on the on the ground tech and on the ground actual wired connection or wireless connection. So I'm a little worried about 60 FPS streaming, but if they're able to do it and it looks fine and you have it as an option, you don't have to do it. And like you can get a choppy 60 FPS stream that like buffers every 15 seconds, but is on the DVR. So you still get all the action because that's the other thing is when it would buffer or like something would happen, it would just like, cut the two minutes that it was buffering and you wouldn't see anything that happened. Whereas now I'm guessing because of that live transcoding and because of the live DVR and act, like instant rewind, you'll actually be able to see those two minutes that you missed that will get uploaded. But yeah, maybe because they weren't in the actual like VODs when they came live. I'm interested to see kind of what happens, but 60 FPS live streaming, native schedule page. No really idea what that means. Maybe it's just like there's going to be a scheduler and you're going to see when everything is going to come up in terms of the programmed content as well as live and then more. See the full announcement for the details. And so we're going to check out that full announcement real quick. Let's see. Page Pierce, fast forward and rewind. Yes. Oh, there's fast forward. That'll be clutch. We'll have closed cap captions. Ooh, this is a great question because there's a lot of like not crazy expensive closed captioning AI. That would be great if they're able to make that happen. Yeah, most people are just super stoked on the pause and rewind and that Vimeo has a terrible UI. So <laughs> stoked on that as well. Take a quick look at the launch, see if there's anything interesting. This Golf Network 2.0 launches with Insys Video. Now, apparently, I was reading over this a little bit, that um, they're moving away from Vimeo OTT. Thank the Lord, that platform was trash. And it's a newly built platform hosted by Insys Video Technologies. And it's not like Insys isn't like, the platform like Vimeo basically just is like, hey, this is our package. You pay this per month. This is what you get. Whereas apparently this is a little bit more of a bespoke option for them. Uh, Insys VT has built and maintained custom platforms for clients across sports, film and television and government sectors. It's going to rely on the AWS media services, which is pretty industry standard for transcoding packages and recording and the cloud front for distribution. And this is what's massive, is that Insys Video Technology, similar to the other things that they've done, has built a custom platform for Disc Golf Network and is not using an out-of-the-box solution. And so the DGN team will have a lot more influence over development priorities, which is probably pretty big because with Vimeo, I remember Jeff Spring kind of like, he was going on podcasts and I was interested in these answers because I really wanted them to fix a lot of these problems that they were having. And he was basically like, I mean, what are we going to do, guys? Like, there's basically nothing that we can do because it's just like an out-of-the-box solution from Vimeo. And so now... There's a little bit less excuses on them, but it also means that they're able to do a lot more good with their platform because they can actually build custom things and custom widgets and specific like schedules like they're talking about. What is also interesting, scrolling a little bit back up here, is that you have a supported mobile and smart TV application. So I think they already had a smart TV application, but just looking at that user experience compared to the last one just on the computer, I imagine it's going to be significantly better. And then they, there are a couple people that Insys has created other custom platforms for. I'm not aware of most of these people. I know that most of them are just like football teams in Europe, but this was Jeff's statement. We're thankful for our partnership with Vimeo OTT and their support of DGN's growth during our first four seasons. Looking to the 2024 season and beyond, we're thrilled to take our next big step forward by collaborating with Insys VT and AWS to bring a refreshed new look and feel to the Disc Golf Network platform and begin developing new and improved features for subscribers. As the Disc Golf Network enters its fifth year of service, we recognize the need to evolve our platform to better serve an ever-growing Disc Golf audience. Collaborating with Insys VT and AWS represents a proactive step towards addressing subscriber needs. Thank the Lord particularly in maintaining streaming quality while managing large influxes of live viewers, which was a massive problem that they have, which is something that like seemed to be pretty standard with the Vimeo OTT. And so now being hosted on AWS and having their own like bespoke software, it should be better. 
And they said that's what they're saying, and I guess that means that's what we can hold them to. And ensuring stability of the platform performance over time. We're enthusiastic about the potential this change holds for future developments and immediate improvements to the platform, which we've already like kind of seen just from a non-subscriber view. And we can't wait for the start of the 2024 season. This is a demanding project that for us due to time restrictions, but thanks to our highly configurable white label framework and fully cloud-based deployment, we were able to meet the challenging migration requirements, said Christoph Bartowski, INSYS Video Technology CEO. Interesting. So they're actually able to get a comment from that guy. I'm really interested to see what he has to say. I'm confident that the new AWS Media Services based workflow in combination with our cloud DRM content protection will provide a stable, highly scalable, which is important as DJM wants to grow, and secure content distribution meeting the demands of disc golf fans worldwide. Super, super exciting there. So there's not a lot more information about the 30 to 60 frames per second move, which just makes things significantly like creamier. And you can see investing in the upgrade from 30 to 60 FPS aligns with the network's ongoing efforts to improve picture quality, reinforced by major investments in leading in, in industry leading broadcast equipment, which includes t testing and use of a new CBRS system. I'm going to look at what that is over the course of the 2023 season. Oh, that was just open coverage. So they were using that's how they were able to get coverage for Northwoods Black. And so I just think that this is such a good sign for where disc golf is and it's in like relatively good hands for how it's going to grow i know not everybody loves the disc golf network or the disc golf pro tour but they seem to be doing things that are in the best business interests not only of themselves but in disc golf as a whole because as disc golf grows they will grow because they're the professional arm of disc golf and typically in every sport that you have you have just the amateur player which is a lot of the funding base and then the pro side of things which is an aspirational identity for a lot of amateur players as well as just like something to look up to and to enjoy because when you enjoy something on your level you want to see it done at the highest level so i think that this is pretty massive and i think dgn for the most part does really well by their subscribers um apparently you may need to download a new app update the app or log back in usernames and passwords will stay the same not sure about that. Well, I'm sure about it. I probably just forgot mine. Along with the payment method. Subscribers can explore a complete guide to navigating the new website and available apps here, which we'll take a quick look at just to see if there's anything interesting. And then just about Insys and about DGN. And then if you need to contact somebody, there's someone to contact. Speaking of that person to contact, she wrote up an article of her of the complete guide to navigating DGN 2.0. I just kind of want to see if there's any like updated looks in here and any useful information for us all. As a PDGA member, to get your discount, you'll need to follow a new process to ensure that you get it. It's much easier than the old one for generating a new discount every year because you don't need to like get your new code, which you would have to like put in your PDGA number. It would reference the PDGA to make sure that it was still active, and then it would spit you out a 12-month discount code. But now, because of the new platform provider, all that you need to do is pair your Disc Golf Network and your PDGA accounts, which I'm sure there'll be a way to do that in the Disc Golf Network itself. I'm not going to show that because I'm not actively subscribed, and I'm not paying like 30 bucks over the course of this next three months to do that. <laughs> Once pairing is complete you'll be able to access your discount automatically if you were logged in you will be automatically logged out of wherever you were logged in just log back in apparently this is going to affect like maybe one of you guys but the xbox app the new version of dgn is not ready for the xbox app so if that's where you're planning on watching all your disc golf can't do it quite yet it's a bunch of kind of support for the specific places that you can download it a lot of places you can download it there's new terms of service apparently so that's super interesting shays anthony is going to go because we're not talking about takes anymore wow this is much brighter I'm sad those are going to have to go. Maybe I'm going to have to buy my own shades, but some pretty cool stuff that's been going on that I'm planning on shooting here pretty soon. Just to let you guys know, right as I finish up this video, I got a notification. I got this package. So we'll unbox this from Birdie Disc Golf Supply, I think. Pens? No. Good. Knives. Oh, yeah. Cool. <coughs> Massive. Let's check it out. Pretty money. Looks pretty good. I think I asked for a large because I wanted it to be a little large, but this is a medium, which I'm either a medium or a large. I'm just going to like in larger fitting stuff, but I kind of like this. I just don't want anything to look too tight, you know? It's kind of like 2015 cringe right there. Not dealing with that. So we got a big boy, which you look at. It's pretty nice. Derek did also say that this was a brand a little big. This is a medium too. Woo, a little zip up. I just wanted like a zip shirt, zip hoodie that like I could just put on and be warm outside. This is pretty nice. No announcement or anything with it. Derek just likes to support the channel, so sent me some nice birdie stuff. And I'll probably be wearing this blue guy today. I think it might be a little too warm, but I'll bring it. But this thing is really warm. This is going to be really nice in the winter. Today, since I'm going to try to get this video up basically right now, <laughs> I'm going to be going and filming a couple things. First is a video that's going to be going live on the main channel on... I can't look at my schedule right now. Probably... Saturday or so, which is gonna be that Rolo video. I'm so pumped. I'm gonna be playing with my buddy TJ. We're gonna be throwing. I'm 
glow rollo, regular star rollo, and just playing 18 holes at a course, probably playing shorts and longs to make it a little bit more challenging. He rips, he throws probably 525, 550 relatively consistently. Then hopefully if I have time, I'm gonna film a video for this channel reviewing the Guava versus the Pathfinder. We threw them one time in the Clash video on the main channel, but I wanna kinda of get a better nine hole view of these guys next to each other, just to kinda of see which one I prefer for my off season bag, because they are relatively similar for sure, but the Guava I think is just slightly deeper, but it doesn't feel too big. Like it still feels comfortably deep because of the way that the rim feels like it kinda of comes into itself, similar to a Toro rim. So that's also going in the review bag for today. And then, Lastly, I was able to get my hands on a Jaro Palooza box, kind of. It's like a fake Jaro box uh, because <laughs> I'm gonna actually throw this in there and make make it funny. But um, my buddy and my patron and my disc golf sugar daddy, Greg. Well, he's not my disc golf sugar daddy. Apparently, he's the disc golf sugar daddy of like a bunch of his friends because he has like way more discs than all of them. But right now, I guess he's my disc golf sugar daddy with that Jaro box. He bought like three of them, and so he's letting me borrow a couple detours to film a detour review, which is also going live tonight on the Bonanza Disc Golf channel. So we'll be filming that, and I'm interested to see how it fares. We have a Hex, or two Hex, and then a Midnight Prowl 2, and just an Origin that I, he actually gave me earlier in the year, a Turtle Shell Origin, just to kind of see how they fly, because these are the discs that I'm assuming they're gonna fly most like, but these are so much flatter. So I'm imagining they're gonna be a little bit more flippy, and like have a little bit more right and a little bit more left movement than something as Domi as the Origin. I am not gonna open it here, unfortunately, because I want to open it kind of on camera, but this is the Latitude 64 box, which I'm gonna be filming stuff with tomorrow. Apparently there's two new Royal Discs in here. We're gonna have some really cool stuff behind the scenes that I hope that I can tell you about soon. Thanks for watching, appreciate you. If you want more of these, like, like stuff like this is important to me, and then hopefully they're gonna talk about the qualifying series. I'm gonna make some more Banana Frog videos about that kind of stuff, and you'll see that soon. Peace, love ya. Get out of here, what are you still doing? Leave, go enjoy your day, bye.